जाती हैं वट इज दे ओहाना फॉर यू ओहाना ओहाना दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ओके श्योर सो ओहाना ऑफ कोर्स मीन्स फैमिली एंड this work i believe connects us with uh, what would be called the ohana nui so i think there must be different definitions for ohana nui but from my perspective and the perspective of the work um it's more than our human family um it would be uh all of life and all of nature um and everything so everything outside of us the grass and the trees and the stars and the ocean of course our our relatives our relatives that are bonded in love as well as blood um but also inside of us everything that exists inside all of our sensations our um emotions our memories our hopes and dreams anything that could possibly come into contact i'm going to rephrase that anything that that we feel at any moment on any level becomes a member of our family so kahu would say very similar things and he did in his video that every every moment of your life uh contains um every sensation every every desire uh is all a member of your family and so this tradition of course was pre-christian uh it was before way before any christian invasion and so it comes from a place where instead of saying this is good and this is bad um the work says this is all your family so mm -hmm. the the idea and the goal of being with your ohana is to embrace everyone and is to include everyone so in the christian paradigm we might say oh i feel angry and it might be um the definition might be as a good person you don't you're not angry you don't want to be an angry person you want to be a good person so we try to get rid of our anger right. or we try to get rid of our guilt or we try to get rid of our sadness and in this tradition we say instead come closer to me this member of my family this anger this sadness this fear um come closer to me and tell me what what it is that's going on with you so i i use the example a lot of times like a little child you know if a little child goes outside and starts playing and something happens in the playground and they come back we don't shut the door and say come back when you're happy we say no come come in what happened tell me it's okay to cry and what you know tell me everything and we hold them until they it's free this this feeling they have inside is free and it's the same thing with our ohana um our family is that we we bring them closer to us and we ask them to unfold what it is they are are upset about and in this way that energy that was contracted and was held it becomes free and then we have the energy of that emotion that sensation that concern that uh fear we have that energy now so that we can move forward in life with more vitality mm -hmm. um sometimes i see, I, i can actually see it like as if all of my family were behind me and as i step forward do I want to step forward with everyone come together we all come together all that energy come with me or do we want to leave somebody way back there the point is that they're still a part of us they're not going to go away but i'm either dragging them by keeping them in the darkness keeping them in a place that's bad and that shouldn't be there mm -hmm. or i accept the fact that everyone is here if i've ever felt angry uh, i have anger If I've ever felt sad, I have sadness. It's part of me. So can I just say yes? Can I accept everybody and we all move forward together? Um and there are times and places for every family member. Every family member is useful. So the example I like to give a lot is if you're in a playground with your child and someone grabs the child and starts running away who shouldn't be grabbing your child, you need your anger to go, "Hey, come back here 
mm. give me my child if we, we if we really are just all love and light there's so many times in life that we need our our um, our strength we need our anger we need our um, our determination we need to not give up um, so the mastery comes when we when we are in communication with life to such a degree that all of our family members are accessible and they come forward when they're needed just like that without any idea that oh this is bad I shouldn't feel this it's just available in this moment this is what I need Kahu calls that raising your internal speed mm -hmm. the speed at which you communicate with your own life force to allow that to be to allow yourself to be available to your ohana nui allow your ohana nui to be as free as possible and the one thing i want to say about this whole way of navigating is that it is an endless path so always new things are arising in life <laughs> new situations that i've never seen before new emotions inside me new uh perceptions and i get to meet that and discover what is appropriate right now what is what is this igniting in me I discover new family members all the time that I've never seen before or mm -hmm. felt before and so it's a very very exciting path um, because it's always unfolding inside of us this this place inside of us of life is infinity it's the infinite and so how can we ever be done we're never done um, and it makes life just really full of of curiosity and discovery and excitement mm. um, and a lot of joy, I find. Yeah. Yeah. I remember this feeling when I did, come, when I did your workshop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> an infinite joy, an infinite discover. Mm hmm Yeah. 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 And, um, I'm curious, Jody, do you do something every day to rise your energy or yeah. to stay aligned in alignment. alignment with this path? Yeah, um, I do a morning practice, a morning practice which um, consists of listening, a deep listening to actually my body, mm -hmm. a very simple, simple movements in my body. Um, that we did in the workshop, mm -hmm. I call that Ho'omana Mana, and, um, and again this idea that nothing is right or wrong is very very helpful in this listening, to just see what, what is here today, and, and from the listening to my body um, awakens maybe different emotions that I didn't maybe know that I was feeling, mm -hmm. but they tend to rise and then I get to meet that. I, I get to meet myself in a, in a way that isn't my agenda of what I need to do today, who I need to talk to, yeah. what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing, but just where am I actually. I am, I am stiff, I am tired, I am... So however I am in my conscious mind, I bring it to my practice. Mm. Um, and then the listening sometimes leads to other things, so maybe as I listen I realize, oh, I, I, I really need to go for a run or do some yoga or do some flying or um, yeah different things that are are in a different um, alignment to the Ho'omana Mana but I do them with the same kind of attention the same kind of listening so part of that listening is that I don't go past myself so I would never and in these days go to a yoga class and just try to get it right and try to make the shape and no matter what I, yeah. <laughs> I just go for it um, that really doesn't happen anymore I go through the layers of feeling the layers of emotion the layers of sensation um, and try to be as open to each as possible and that that brings me to a place of uh, it just it just reminds me to listen mm -hmm. and then the rest of my day is is I'm more open to feeling what's really true in each moment rather than what I want to be true or what I judge as being not true or yeah just all those, those the programs mm -hmm. that we we generally walk around with it really helps to um, 
start the day with kind of an unwinding of uh, attention to that. Um, and it helps me to to meet life <laughs> in myself again, like meeting life. I, I meet life in myself more fully, and then as I go, I'm able to meet other other people more fully because you know each of us is a whole universe in, in and of themselves. So as I sit with you, it's very exciting to be on the edge of another universe and looking into those eyes and and recognizing that my perceptions are not the perceptions. They're just mine. Mm. And I get to meet them. And that this other person or any other person might have a whole different set of perceptions. And they're allowed to have those. So it helps me, This again, it comes back to the right and wrong thing. It helps me to just say, OK, they are having a different experience of this mm -hmm. moment. Unless, of course, it's somehow physically threatening or or in some way dangerous, of course, then my other family members come out and say, stop, <laughs> go away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so unless it's threatening, it, which most of life is not for me, thankfully, um, it, it, it provides an opening not just for me, but to allow others to be as they are mm. as well. Yeah. It looks like that we can say just the phrase that is all about you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything is yeah. all about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in a sense on one kauna, and kauna mm -hmm. means depth of perception. On one kauna, it is all about you. It is all about me. And what I would add to that is the recognition that it's it's all about each of us. Right. So, <laughs> um, because one can get very in their bubble of. Mm -hmm. This is the way I see it. This is what I've learned. These are my huge revelations, and they must be right. But they're right for you, and they're right for your unfolding. And there's such a lot of um, grace involved in allowing yourself to, allowing other people to have their unfolding the way, the way it comes out of them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jodi, you say, you're talking about before fly. What is the importance of this fly movement related to the body work? Okay. So flying is the English word, the English translation, and the Hawaiian word is ka'alele au, mm -hmm. as I was taught it. Um, and flying is a movement that that has all the different parts of the body moving in the shape of the infinite. So mm -hmm. that figure eight that we know as the infinity sign, we step into that shape. And w as we step into that shape, um, we invoke the resonance of the infinite. And so what tends to happen in the, as we train is that whatever is not um, in alignment with the infinite, rises to the surface so that we can meet it, so that we can actually meet more and more and more of our family members. Usually the things that are not in alignment with the infinite are things that we have pushed down, we have judged, we have pushed away, mm -hmm. we've tried to kill inside of us that shouldn't be there. Uh, old pain, old hurt, old trauma. And when we do the body work with, um, without meeting these things that we have push down it feels to me a little bit like I'm holding my breath <gasps> and then I try to do the body work you know trying to breathe as little as possible because I'm not um, expanding and moving with all of me I'm, I'm moving with only a very limited part of me that is allowed when I start to allow the rest of me to awaken and arise then more and more and more of the practitioner myself can come into harmony with myself and what that does in the body work is it allows for a frequency or a resonance of the infinite to be more and more accessible mm. infinity means everything endless endlessly and so if I am not um, available for the infinite to touch me, 
and to bring what uh, to ignite whatever is going to be ignited then I'm not able to um, rest in that resonance and that resonance is actually what does any healing that is to be done in the body work um, it's also the basis of the movement that the body work is based on so the footwork from the flying and to a degree the, the arm movement is applied to the body so we, we learn the dance and then the dance is then applied to the body and um, it's it's the basis for our alignment in the work and and as we fly on the body which mm -hmm. is becomes ancient lomi lomi we excuse me we are able to um, continue to allow this igniting to go on because we keep flying and so we keep uh, allowing the infinite to rise more and more and and you know between us and the infinite inside of us all of us no matter how much work we've done there are layers of things that have been placed on top of that infinity on top of that pure life inside of us and so this process allows those things to keep um, being met and so what the bodywork ends up being is is a tremendous amount of personal growth for us and in so doing the frequency that this person is exposed to um, allows their their frequency to ignite as well it's like a tuning fork mm -hmm. the tuning fork doesn't go to touch if the tuning fork touches something else it stops yeah yep. so if we ignite and and ding our own tuning fork and just let that resonance go because we have no control over it right. then that resonance will be met by the by the other person on the table and then they get to have their own experience of that which may be completely different to our experience it's mm. not our business what's going on with them in a way mm. this frequency that you talk about uh, it's a um, I can feel that is the frequency of love, you know, the love and accept myself, my infinity, and then that this person can also uh, feel this love and arise. Yeah. And uh, a lot of time, many times when love starts to work, we feel the fear, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we feel like <laughs> block. Yes. Yeah. So. The body work help us uh, to release this uh, and uh, to re help also the other the people to release that. Yes, it can. So I would use a very broad definition of love. Mm -hmm. um, Kahu didn't use love so much. He used more acceptance. Mm. So if I accept everything, it it is it is similar to loving everything. Yeah. Um, the reason why I don't use love too much is because love has very strong definitions in people's minds. The way we've been taught what love is. Um, we've been taught what love is from religions. We've been taught what love is by our parents. So as we, as we grow up, we ingest, we digest a lot of different ideas about love. And one of the ideas that we ingest is that love is good, and love is kind, and love is... Um, love is like all these soft things mm -hmm. but for me I feel that love there's a, a time when love like That's you say it, 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 yeah, <laughs> it, it, need, it, it can bring up the fear that we need to face mm -hmm. and that is that is the most loving thing that this moment can do for you is mm -hmm. to let you face your fear and not to say oh let me take that fear away that seems to be the more prevalent idea of love let me take things away for you so that you can only feel good but this love is a deep deep unfolding of let me allow you to feel all more and more and more I won't say all because we never can get there but feel more and more and more of who you are and when we get introduced to these other parts of ourselves sometimes we don't like that it feels very uncomfortable Right. Um, so this resonance, this frequency, um, yes, I have found it to be a pathway to more and more acceptance of myself and more and more acceptance of others. Um, 
and a willingness to keep moving in that direction. Um, a willingness to come up to difficult places in myself and say yes to them and, and be open to their unfolding. Um, and it, it, to me, the frequency is the pathway. When, when I say Keala Hoku, pathway to the stars, this frequency is the pathway. Because actually, the stars live inside of us. You know, there is, there is a website I can point you to that, that breaks down the logic, actually chemically, how we are 93% stardust humans. Yeah. We're 93% stardust. So as we pay attention in this way, that, that frequency of our origin on a different counter, the stars would be known as our origin point. So in the Kumulipo, the Hawaiian uh, genealogical chant, origin chant, mm -hmm. it traces the origins of the people all the way back to the Pleiades, the stars. Um, but what are our deeper origins, the origin of us as a human being, um, it can also speak to that place. So that is, that is the pathway. This frequency is the pathway.